today we're looking at God wants to answer our prayers. So God wants, as God desires to answer our prayers. You know, we already looked at scriptures um, that tell us about God's desire to answer our prayers. That was what we did last week. And that's why we should build our expectation because he desires it. He is not just, um, he's not just able, he is also willing to answer our prayers. And you know, anytime we pray to God, he will never say, you're asking for too much. He will never say, you know what? I have so many children. Why don't you just keep quiet and stay away for a while so I can get to attend to others? No, he will never say that. And he will never say to us, I am just too busy right now. Girl, you know what? It's not a good time. Come back later. Never. He will never say that to us. And even though we know that he has so many children all over the world, and so many people praying to him all at once, be rest assured that God's got your full, you've got his full attention when you are praying to him or when you are communing with him, you have his full attention. So Paniah chapter 3 verse 17 tells us that he rejoices over us with joy, he rests in his love, he rejoices over us with, with love. So that's the God, with singing, that's the God that we serve. And let's just imagine a parent of adult children. Um, you know, um, we know how it feels when those, you know, children of that age, when they check in with you or when they have, they just put time aside to have real conversation with you. I know that feels good. That feels great to any parent, you know, because when they're still young, uh, they depend on you, you take them to school, you do everything for them, you tell them what to do and not, you know, to do and not do. But when they are now standing on their own and they still remember you, and it's, it's good when they say, hey, hi, mom, hi, dad, and they're gone. So just say to say hi, Anna. But when they pause and take time and have conversations and spend real, you know, um, quality time, that really means a lot to parents. It's the same with God. Because let's remember, He always has time for us. We are the one to create time for Him. And anytime we're ready, He will never be too busy. He will never be unavailable. He will never say you're asking for too much. In fact, everything He has is on the table for us. Um, let's look at um, scriptures because we don't just like to throw these things out there. They sound nice, but if they're not scripture based, uh, it's, it's not good enough. Honestly, it's, it's simply not the truth. But we have this in Proverbs 3 verses 27 to 28. Proverbs 3, 27 to 28. The scripture says, Withhold not good from them to whom it is due when it is in the power of thine hand to do it. Say not unto thy neighbor, go and come again, and tomorrow I will give, when thou hast it by thee. That is, don't tell, don't tell your neighbor, don't tell anyone, go and come back. When you have it, you, you have what they need, so release it once and for all. Don't tell them, you know, go tomorrow, and then you can come back. And we know that this God, he is able and he is willing and he will never tell us to go and come back. Never. Because he will never be more powerful than he is today. He won't be more powerful tomorrow. He won't be more loving tomorrow. He won't be more available tomorrow. He is the I am. He is all he has ever been, all he is ever going to be. He is. So we give him all the glory that we are his children. And he's always have time for us. Also, we can check James chapter 4, verse 17. James 4, 17. James 4, 17 says, Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. To anyone that knows to do good, but does not do it, the word of God tells us, to that person it is sin. And there's nothing like God knowing to do good and for him not to do it. And like we've always said, and that's why I call this 
Prayer 101. It's like elementary stage in the school of prayer um, when we are asking God for things. Um, like I've said, the only thing there is to ask Him for is direction and wisdom. All the other things are already done. They're already on the table for us. But we still need to take this step before we can take it up, um, you know, to higher levels. So God, when His Word tells us that when we know to do good and we do not do it, it is sin to us. And so we know that God cannot sin. He is righteous. We've read scriptures from um, like three weeks ago that tells us that he is righteous and there is no unrighteousness in him. None whatsoever. So he will not tell us to behave wisely and to be good when he himself is otherwise. In fact, all that he instructs us to do is him, um, is, 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 is his way of it is it is it is his goal holy spirit help me to to get us to think to speak and act like him that's all of his instruction to us he wants us to be exactly like him so we can get his divine so that you know the supernatural can be the normal event of our lives that's all is out to do so when he says don't do this this is what to do um Take, do this thing this way, it's so we can be like him, think like him, talk like him, act like him, and get his own kind of result and get the things that are only possible with him, by him, and through him. And Numbers 23, 19, Numbers 23, 19, like I said, some of these scriptures, we may know them so well, and like I've said earlier on, those are even the ones that we you know, pull the brakes on and go slowly. Numbers 23, 19 says, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. As he said, shall he not do it? Or as he spoken, shall he not make it good? He is God. He is not man. He doesn't need to repent. No, he is all righteous. And so, as he said something, he will do it. And so when he's telling us, this is what I want you to do so that you can, you know, be like this and have this, it's all for our good. We can, his word is his bond. And when we begin to relate with his word, like he said it, that's enough for me. He said it, that is it. And then we start meditating so that our minds don't get in the way. Um... That, that at that point everything becomes possible so we give god praise he will not ask us to be good while he himself is crooked it will never be so he has told us all these things so that we can always have our prayers answered and so that we can always stand before him knowing very well that this is the last bus stop this is the only bus stop this is my answer this is my way out this is my way up. This is the only way for me. And let me tell you, he never disappoints. So why does God want to answer our prayer? Why is it? Well, there has to be something. Uh, one of the reasons we can find is from Jesus himself in John 16, 23 to 24. John chapter 16, verse 23 to 24. Jesus speaking there said, And in that day, ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name? Ask, and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. Can we hear that? God wants to answer our prayers so that our joy may be full. What an awesome God we serve. And you know, many believers paint a picture of God as an abusive or absentee father without even knowing that's what they're doing when they talk about God in a certain way. But he is willing to lavish his goodness on us. I mean, let's check Ephesians chapter 2 verses 4 to 5. So we can see his heart. 
Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 to 5. Thank you, Lord. Very amazing God. He said, But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sin, and quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved. I want us to focus on that verse 4. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, wherewith he loved us. His great love, wherewith he loved us. That was why, even while we were yet sinners, he quickened up to, you know, together with Christ. I believe um, Romans 5.5 5 tells us the same that God commend his love towards us. Um, Romans 5, 8, sorry. Romans 5, 8. God commends his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That is God, you know, professing his love for us, demonstrating his love for us. It's not just a love of, I love you, I love you. It's a love that, you know, uh, backed up with actions proven with action so we give him all the glory so when we add those scriptures and we combine it to romans chapter 8 verse 32 wow powerful i mean it will make any believer spin for joy when we truly immerse ourselves in this truth romans 8 32 says he that spear not his own son but delivered him up for us all how shall it not with him also freely give us all things? Freely give us all things. All things. So when we look at it, everything is on the table for us. He's given us his highest and best, Jesus Christ. Anything else we ask for is just icing on the cake as far as he is concerned. So it's not surprising. That God, because of the great love, the God that is rich in mercy, and because of the great love with which he loved us, how he, it's not surprising that he wants to answer our prayers so that our joy may be full. That's his goal. He wants us to be full of joy. He wants us to be at peace no matter what comes against us. He wants us to have confidence in what Jesus has already done. And you know, when you know somebody truly loves you, you, you there is confidence. There is even maybe before we, for those of us that are married, before, you know, we enter into that marriage relationship, we're sizing it. Does this person really mean this? I love you. Do they mean it? And you know, and we pray and um, and we, we, we look for signs, like not signs as in something in the sky, like you, you know, you watch and pray. You don't just pray with all your eyes closed. No, you watch and you pray and you're listening for God and you're looking at the situation that you have in your hand. Do I want to step into this for life? Do I really want to spend my life with this person? I mean, but when it gets to a stage and we are convinced, we say like, yeah, let's, let's, let's go for it. So love is amazing. And that's, the kind of love that God has for us, we cannot even begin to describe it. But he has shown that love through Jesus. And this scripture, Romans 8, 32, is also saying, if he has given us Jesus, what else will he not give unto us? That should keep us at peace. That should give us confidence in his love. So now we're moving to what did Jesus say about prayer? And that's all we can send through the um, text message today. What did Jesus tell us about prayer? But before we get into what he told us about prayer, I want us to really quickly look at why should we even pay serious attention to what Jesus said about prayer? And you know, for a religious mind, they'll say, oh, it's Jesus. Why not? Um, he's the son of God. We know all that. And honestly, that is Come all completely true. That is the amazing truth. But most people don't realize that Jesus actually left his privileges as part of the Godhead in heaven. 
He left it and he stepped into this world as you and I. The only thing is he had the, the, the blood flowing in his veins is not of man. So he is not susceptible to sin. And so that way he's able to save those of us who are in sin. Because hey, if you are hoeing too, you can't pay for someone else. So he's not hoeing that depth of sin. And so he's able to pay the bill with that blood. Even to bail us out from you know, the bondage of the devil that Adam got all of us into. So we want to listen to what he has to say and why. Why should we listen to him? First, let's look at what he said in John 11, verse 41 and 42. That will open our eyes when it comes to Jesus' experience, when it comes to prayer. And to be precise, praying to God. John 11, uh, 41 and 42 says, Then they took away the stone. This, um, this is Jesus at the tomb of Lazarus. So John 11, 41 and 42. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast had me. Verse 42. And I knew that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. So did we notice what he said? I know you hear me always. That's Jesus. I know he was talking to God. He said, Father, I know you hear me always. So for someone like that, he is worth listening to. Someone that God listens to always. We should, everything he says about prayer, we should hang on to it. I know we should hang on to every word he says because he is Jesus, the Christ. He is the one who came to die for us. And much more we can see. He has a proven track record when it comes to getting his prayers answered by God. Uh, Romans 8, 34 tells us, Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is reason again. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. So even now, at the right hand side of God, he is still praying. And then, you know, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, every matter is established. We also have this record in Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25. This scripture says, Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. He is interceding to those who come to God through him. He lives forever to make intercession for us. And he has a proven track record of answer prayers. So we need to listen to him. So what did he say about prayer? Three things, just like we send it in the text. The first one is Jesus said we should pray Make our request to God in his name. We should make our request in his name. This one works. We'll see this in John chapter 14, verses 13 to 14. John 14, 13 to 14 says, And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye ask, anything in my name i will do it so in a nutshell he's telling us make your request in my name anything you desire i will do it but we know i believe we all know that anything means anything within godly parameters it's not just any i mean he said anything but we know what it stands for we know him to be holy we know him to be true. We know him to be righteous. So anything for him means anything righteous, anything holy. He doesn't have to take from someone else to give to us. No, he doesn't have to take what is given to someone else to, to give to us. He doesn't have to do that. He is able to do all things. And let's remember anything um, lustful, evil, shady, or of selfish desires, those is not going to answer. Anyone that have, you know, any of those will have to help themselves 
to get those things done. And let's remember that the scripture already told us there is no unrighteousness in him. So we can't get him to fulfill such, you know, desires. Also, we can check the book of Psalm chapter 19 verses 8 to 9. So we can see the kind of God that we're talking about. It says the statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous all together. So when you talk of pure, when you talk of enlightening, like clean, when you talk of true and righteous, anything within those parameters, they're good. And you can consider them done as far as God is concerned. So we should make requests in his name concerning anything within those parameters and we can rest, be rest assured that it's done number two jesus said to base our request on the word of god and this we'll see from john 15 verse 7 john 15 7 jesus speaking he said if ye abide in me and my words abide in you ye shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you so we can see it here we can it's telling us pray use my word so we are to get relevant scriptures we say this almost every time we meet and this is one step that people skip and this is at the root of not getting results to our prayer because when we don't know what god's word says about it we're most likely going to ask the wrong way and once we get those scriptures also we need to rightly divide them Rightly divide means not just take it, what is that scripture? We, we, we don't take it out of context. We look at it based on the new covenant that we are in. And we use that lens to rightly divide the word of truth. Just like we know now that we are blessed. Galatians 3, 13 to 14 says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. So for us, even anytime we're reading the Bible and he's saying, bless me, Lord, we just thank him because of that truth. Galatians 3, when it was written, that was correct. That, that, that is right. They ask God to bless them so they can have the blessing. Now we have the blessing. They obey and then they are blessed. Now we are blessed. And when we obey, the blessing begins to walk in our lives. And he also gave us the power to obey him. So the blessing can be unlocked and we can walk in the blessing. So when anyone is praying after all of that, all that Jesus has done, the prayer is quite different. I know we'll get to it um, some weeks from now, but that is just the way it is. We stand on the word. We look for, in fact, that's where the most prayer is. God, show me, show me, open my eyes. Where, where's the scripture? Where is it hot? And give me the right understanding. Help me to rightly divide this word. Help me so that I don't. Because once we get the word, most people say they believe and they don't have scriptures. I'm telling you, that is no faith. It is mere presumption. When you faith begins where the will of God is known. And the only way faith comes is by hearing and hearing the word of God. Maybe someone just like you're hearing the word of God now faith is building up in you that is also accurate but you can imagine it's never like you um you know just standing in the world spending so much time in the world and then you get up and you're even looking at this situation you know now after all that time in the world it's not something you start praying to god for you are the one to release the word of god unto it and you just speak once and it's done why? Because you spent so much time in the world. As you are doing that, faith is building up. Unbelief is going. And as faith is the conductor of the power of God, you speak that word in faith, you see it manifest. So spending time in the world is actually an act of prayer. It's part of prayer. Asking him, just standing there. And just like we said in the text message, except you have an emergency going on. Please don't skip this step. 
even for me that you know we we sometimes we deal with similar situations maybe we pray for someone for deliverance and we are facing someone else we were you know about to you know pray over them and stuff and still spend time lord what are the relevant scriptures for this what what what's the word and as i'm praying in tongues praying in the holy ghost we'll get to that some weeks also from now the scriptures are coming i'm putting them down i'm putting them down this is how we get results because it's not just like me saying okay these are the scriptures we're going to use come on let's get them together they work don't get me wrong but imagine when you take time to really say god i know you know what's going on here where are my scriptures you are saying where, where's my sword Ex which weapon am i to use and you know when you do that you don't miss you don't miss the target you don't so it's very crucial when we start doing this that's when we're really matured that's when we're really growing that's when we're able to really deal with situation and this way we don't it doesn't drag on forever even when it drags on when most people would have given up you won't you can nobody you even yourself your mind can't talk you out of your miracle because you are full of the word and your faith is not based on what you see but based solely on what he says so that's number two now we're going to number three jesus said to speak to the mountain mark eleven twenty three. he says for verily i say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain be thou removed be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. This is really crucial. There are so many believers that know how to talk to God about their situation, but Jesus said we should also talk to our situation about our God. We, Jesus himself, this was how he operated. He spoke to three demons, dead bodies, um, I mean, diseases, um, sicknesses. He's, he, he spoke to everything. And he's just saying, hey, take steps like I'm, I took so you can get my kind of results. And he told us, he said, when you speak and you do not doubt in your heart. So if you do number two, number three will be a walkover. Speaking to situations will not be a problem. Because if that scripture didn't say, and shall not doubt, then everything we say we will have. But that clause is there to open our eyes to it. That, hey, are you sure there is no doubt? And let's remember when we talked about fasting, that's what fasting is for. When your mind is just not agreeing with you. Your mind is saying, yeah, I know that's what the Bible says, but this is a huge problem. Can't you see? Can't you see that this is not just common air day? Can't you see that this is not just, I need a few hundred dollars. This is a lot of money. How are we going to scale through this? What do you think? You think God is just going to rain more? I mean, your mind can just keep go going on on you and then you put it in its place with fasting and honing in, going all in on the word and you tell it, this is how we're going mind you line up you don't have a choice you don't have a say i have the say the real you is your spirit and he's supposed to take the lead in every situation and he can't if it's weak and when you feed it that means he's strong even your flesh will line up without you having to you know talk to it to get to get in line so we give god praise so we talk to our situation hey situation we call it by its name let me introduce you to my God and Jesus, my Savior. My God is the Almighty, the great I am, my deliverer, my healer, my provider, my all in all. He's never failed. He can never fail. He dwells in me. So if you think I'm alone, you're mistaken. He's always with me. And Jesus is my Redeemer. He has redeemed me from the curse. And so he has even given me the victory over you. So just to let you know, as you're doing that, you're shifting the focus from this situation to God. And according to Psalm 34 verse 5, they looked unto him. They were lighted and they were not ashamed. A lot of people focus on this situation and that's what the enemy wants. 
Because according to 2 Corinthians 3.18, whatever we look at is what we look like. So when we be, decide to look at God by looking at his word and focusing on his word, then we know how this is going to turn out. It's going to turn out just like the word says. But if we look at the situation and that situation will talk to us, the bank account can talk to you, your body can talk to you in terms of um, symptoms. I mean, like, things will talk back to you. But you have to tell them what the word says. And tell them to shut up. And that this is the everlasting word. You are changing. This word will never change. This is the word of the almighty God. He is alive. So is his word. Heaven and earth will pass away. These words will still remain. And so you are conforming to this word. Whether you like it or not. That's how it's going to be. I've just come to announce to you. And as you announce. That's what God will confirm. So we give God all the praise. I believe we've been blessed by his 